So now how do you trade divergence? Well, there's two paths of thought that we're gonna go down and one is gonna be our focus for this video. The first one that we're gonna talk about mostly today is using divergence to keep you from taking a bad trade, to keep you from getting in a potentially trap move, a potential for a trap move. The second thought path that you can go down with divergence is to not only use it to keep you out of a bad trade, but then potentially using that knowledge to flip it and trade the market in the opposite way. Now that's not for the beginners and that's not why we're not gonna go into that too much here in a few minutes when we go into the examples. This video, we're really talking about just identifying the divergence. What does it mean? What is it telling us? How do I draw it? And then how can I then eventually take that to the next level and start to identify trades using it? So how do you draw it? Well, number one, I've got four steps for you. Number one, you start with the RSI as your indicator of choice. Some people will use MACD. Some people will use everything. doesn't matter. I'm telling you after watching this video, if you're watching this far, give me a thumbs up if you like it so far. But if you're watching this far, switch everything up. Start with the RSI. Then you're going to ask yourself, is the RSI high or low at the same reaction point as price action? If the answer is no, you're going to use the corresponding reaction points between the RSI and price action to draw reaction points and draw trend lines. One trend line on the RSI and one trend line on price action. Once you have those trend lines drawn, you're going to be able to clearly identify if there's divergence or not. How? Like I told you already, if price action is moving one way and the RSI is moving the opposite way, that divergence, that difference, because they're not in agreement, creates divergence. So there's two types, mainly, of major divergence. There's this thing called hidden divergence you might have heard of before. We're not going to worry about that. It has no impact on the way that we're trading today. So we're just worried about the two main types of divergence. You have bullish divergence and bearish divergence. Now, bullish divergence is when the indicator is rising and price action is falling. Price is in a downtrend overall. So what does that mean? Price action is moving lower but the indicator is moving higher. So you use the RSI low versus the price action low to identify that divergence. In this situation, your RSI low will be a different reaction point than your price action low. So as you can see here, the RSI low all the way at the left of the arrow is a different point than the price action low here at the end of the top arrow. Does that make sense? I have a couple other graphics that I'm going to walk you through to show this to you before we get into the examples, but just try to visualize here. Bullish, bullish divergence is when the indicator is bullish. The indicator is saying we should be long biased overall, but price action is falling. That's bullish divergence. What does this signal to us? Well, it tells us that a bottom or a slowdown potentially could be coming. So when we're in a trade, if we see this divergence come and we're short and the indicator starts to rise, but price action continues to fall, what does that tell us? Hmm, maybe we should take some of this trade off. Maybe we should book some profits here because we know the indicator is the one we want to trust and it's starting to go against us. The same way where if it's, you know, not forming divergence, you can anticipate that the trade should continue. This divergence will show you when price action is kind of making money grabs, almost grabs, while strength is not moving in the same direction. So now let's talk about bearish divergence. It's just the opposite. What that means is price action is rising. It's in an uptrend and the indicator is moving lower. It's moving down from left to right. Again, it signals to us that the market could be at a top because price action is moving higher to grab orders. The indicator is moving lower, telling us that that strength, that RSI is actually moving down. Overall, the true move is going to be down. So to sum it up, bullish divergence, price is making lower lows and the indicator is making higher lows. So you have that divergence bearish divergence, price is making higher highs, but the indicator is making lower highs. Again, divergent, moving in difference. So here, let's ask a question. You see now we have price action. Of course, you see my EMAs, but we're not really focused on those right now. We're just looking at the black candles. You have price action and you have your green RSI as a part of the TDI. That's that green line down here at the bottom, right? So you ask yourself, like I said, step two, is the RSI low the same point as the price action low? No, in this situation, it's not. You see how the RSI low here was set around one, two in the morning, but the price action low is set at 6 a.m., a little bit after, maybe 6.30. So what does that tell us? From that point, from that point on right here, that second point, when that reaction point is set and it's matched on the TDI and that RSI does not come lower, you see here how the RSI does not come lower? That tells us that this is divergent. So in this situation, how would you react? Well, if you were looking to short this, you would be very hesitant because you know it's already divergent. And in order to trade it short, you'd want 
the divergence on price action, meaning the trend line on price action and the trend line on the TDI both to be broken in order to trade. You will not trade it before it's broken. You'll wait, because why? What happens? Look at this reversal off the divergence. Price continues to drop to grab orders here. The RSI was already telling us from 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. that it was not moving lower. See how the RSI does not make a new low here, but price action does? That's the divergence. So let's go into a few more examples. This is recently, this is USD JPY on the 15 minute chart. You can see the RSI hit its high right at about 8 a.m. From then on, it continued to move lower. However, price action pumped itself higher, just barely higher than it was right before around 8 a.m. that day. So since price action is rising, but the RSI is falling, what do you think happens? Boom, it follows that RSI, that green line in your TDI, it falls away from you. And because the RSI never breaks to the upside here, it never breaks the trend line here to the upside. You would never trade it long. You would either, if you're advanced, look to trade it short or not trade it, just move on beginners. If you're new with my system, it's fine. Move on. Use the divergence on the top to say, look, I can't go long into that divergence until it's broken. And since it's not broken, I'm moving away from it. And of course, you're going to have guys that are going to short it in here, use that as their stop. And that's fine. That's the advanced stuff. But for now, understand, look at the retest here, even where it comes back up, hits that same trend line with pins and moves off it. At that point, though, look at the RSI. Look how much lower the RSI is. It's very clear that the strength, the relative strength here was moving down. Another example, this is the dollar index. You can see over the course of two days, this is the 15 minute chart. You have your RSI high set here at the end of day, right? Moving into the next day, moving into today, what would be today, you see price action sets a new high. So price action is moving up, making higher highs, but the RSI is moving down, making lower highs. That's divergence. So what do we do? We can't trade it long, even though all the indicators tell us to go long. We can't trade it long until we're above the trend line on price action and on the RSI. What happens? It literally comes right to the trend line. This trend line is drawn using this reaction point and this reaction point. Price came right to the divergence line. RSI did not make a new high. And what does it do? Falls away from you. So you see the divergence is really really trusting the indicator. It's really relying on the direction of the RSI and really the whole TDI. That's why I recommend using a TDI because it gives you that market sentiment too that shows you how that starts to fall over. But again, you would not be long in here before the fall. You would not be long in here because you know you can't be long until it gets above divergence here and here. And it never does that. So use the divergence to keep you from getting trapped going long earlier in this day because you know something is brewing. Strength wasn't building. Strength was falling. So here, Euro USD on the hour chart here. So these are our candles. You, see, you can see here from the 15th into the 16th, again, over the course of a week, right? This is Thursday into Friday. The RSI sets its low and price action then on Friday goes and sets another low. So RSI low is here. Price action low is here. You see those reaction points, they don't match, right? RSI low is back here, but price action low is not that same point. So what do we have? Divergence. So what do you do? You use the support and resistance zones that we draw in our system, right? The two candle rule to draw your zone, this horizontal box. And you know that you cannot short this until you break the zone and the RSI breaks the trend line. I mean, you guys aren't stupid, so you probably can understand what happens here. RSI never comes down and makes a new low past the oversold price action never breaks the zone literally for the advanced guys. Like I said, when it comes back to that zone until it breaks it, you can anticipate that it probably will bounce higher off of it because the divergence is stronger than the price action. The RSI rising is going to push the price action up here in coordination with that rising RSI. Does that make sense? If it doesn't drop a comment on this video, please, I will email you. I will talk to you. I will make sure you understand. Here, this is GBP USD this morning. Just something I wanted to add into the chart. Again, using the RSI low on the five minute to price action low here at 7 a.m. I have my trend lines drawn. You can see very clearly rising RSI, falling price action. Take the word from me, divergence, right? So we draw our zone with the wick at the bottom, two candle rule, so it's solid. Zone is good. We know we cannot short GBP USD until it breaks the zone and breaks the trend line here on the TDI. What happens as the day goes on, literally comes back to the zone, can't break the zone. And again, just like in the other Euro USD example, this is the opportunity for advanced traders to go long. People that went long there could have made some money. 
comes back to the zone, it doesn't even break into the zone the second time. So you can see that divergence doesn't just hold through here for a couple hours. It can hold through for days and then completely change the direction of a trend. So that's why you have to be very, very aware of divergence because not only can it present opportunities to go long or short against overall trend because you know the divergence could signal that reversal, so it'll present that opportunity for the advanced guys. But more importantly for all of us, using a TDI, using an RSI and divergence the way that I just showed you how to do will keep you from getting into trap trades. If your RSI is falling and price action is rising and you're ready to go long, check your divergence. If there's divergence, just wait. Because if you wait and it still presents and it breaks the divergence, you can still make your money. But if you're in early before the divergence on price action and the RSI is broken, you're more likely than not going to get chopped around. Wait for those levels to be broken. They're there for a reason. Now